Hello everyone, in last class we have discussed the different types of sampling like statistical sampling, non statistical sampling and also we have discussed sampling of fibers that is loose fibers from bell and we have seen that sampling from bell for cotton fiber is entirely different from that of wool fiber because the difference is the presence of grease in wool that is why that we cannot take the wool fiber that simply. Okay. So, we have to use some other technique like coring technique we have discussed. Now, today we will continue with sampling and now we will discuss sampling of fiber from fibrous strand like sliver, roving or yarn. So, from sliver if you want to take sample it is very difficult, difficult in the sense we cannot take fiber actually unbiasedly. So, there will be definitely some biasness. So, biasness due to length. So, here we have to see how to get the fiber sample which is unbiased. So, there are two different type of sampling techniques we follow. One is called numerical sampling, numerical sample which is totally unbiased and another technique is that to prepare length bias sample and then we have to do some, we have to make some assumptions. So, that then in calculation we can take care of that. Now, in numerical sample as we have discussed in last class also that the if we remove some fiber, some portion of fibers then that those fibers will not affect the proportion of the bulk remaining bulk. So, removal of all the fiber that we started at left side of A if we remove then the other fibers will get unaffected will be unaffected basically. Again removal of fiber from A B zone that is the fibers with green tip will not affect the fibers with red tip or black tip. So, this will not affect it. So, the definition of numerical sample is if the removal of one sample does not affect the composition of the remaining samples, then it can be considered as numerical sample. Okay. Each segment is representative of whole, whole lot. So, that is the numerical sample. Now, let us see how to get the numerical sample and also the length bias sample. In length bias sample as we have discussed this is the x i is proportional to the l y multiplied by y where x i is equal to the proportion of i length group in the sample and l y is equal to length of the fiber with proportion of y percent in bulk. So, x is talking about the sample y is talking about the bulk. Now, the example we can see here suppose there are three different types of fibers are mixed along with other fibers say let us take example of 10 millimeter fiber is 15 percent, 20 millimeter fiber it is a 15 percent, 30 millimeter fiber there it is 15 percent. They are equally distributed. So, proportion is equal their ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 along with other fibers. Okay. Now, 
when it is a length biased sample then it will be x i is proportional to 10 multiplied by 15 that is 150. Here in this case in uh, uh, 20 millimeter its case is 20 multiplied by 15 300 30 multi multiplied by 15 450. So, if we see the proportion of 10 millimeter fiber, 20 millimeter fiber and 30 millimeter fiber their proportion will be 1 is to 2 is to 3. That means, in bulk this fibers proportions were 1 is to 1 is to 1 they are equal proportion, but when we take the sample then their proportion changes depending on the length of the fiber. That means, in the, the sample the longer fiber has got higher chances of getting selected. So, that is why the proportion has increased to 3. So, as the length increases the number of fibers in the in the sample will be more. So, that means, if we remove this sample some quantity of this sample from the bulk. So, that the remaining proportion of the bulk will get affected. So, removal of length biased sample will change the proportion of fibers in the remaining bulk as the longer fibers will be removed at the higher proportion. Okay, that it will always keep on changing the proportion. So, that is a length bias sample. Now, how to get this length bias sample? The chances of fibers crossing the length a b a b line this line it is actually that longer fiber will cross the proportion probability of crossing this line will be more. So, that is why if by some way the fibers crossing this area that means, a b area if we can select then the longer fibers will preferably be selected. So, here if we see the line this is the numerical sampling where the samples are it is almost the there is no uh, variation in length it is it is reflect it reflects the bulk, but when we take the length by sample that is longer length will be selected this distribution has been skewed. Earlier if we assume the bulk is normal distribution then the sample would be normal distribution in case of numerical sampling, but here in case of length bias sample it will be skewed towards the higher length. So, then how to prepare this sample length bias sample? So, this is the way we prepare and the most uh, common example is the fibro sampler in case of high volume instrument. So, this is the clamp where this clamp from the surface of the fiber bulk. If we see this is the fiber bulk and if we try to pick the fiber from the surface. So, that this sample is length bias sample, because the probability of longer fiber is always more to get selected. So, that is why this is the length bias sample and here after clamping this fibers will get folded like fiber 1 forms like this, fiber 2 forms like this, fiber 3, fiber 4 has been clamped at the end point. Now, there are some assumptions, two assumptions main assumptions are there. What are these assumptions? The assumptions are a fiber is caught on the comb in the proportion to its length as compared to the total length of the all the fibers in the sample. That means, longer fiber will have greater chances. Okay. That is the first assumption and second assumption is that the point where it is caught is at random along its length. So, that means, if we assume it is a 
poly cut polyester fiber. So, if we for the sake of our experiment uh, experimentation, so if we see uh, this actually this uh, fibers, this process is used for cotton or fibers with variable length. Now, if we try to see this assumptions, okay. Now, our assumption is that we these are the two assumption. Now, let us see if we take the fibers of same fiber length. Okay. Now, this is the fibers, these are the fibers, it has been assumed that it is a same length, all the fibers are of same length. Now, the first assumptions, first assumption is not valid here, because all the fibers they have the same probability of getting selection. Now, the second assumption is that they will be picked from different points at random. Now, this fiber here it is fiber 1 if we see carefully it is selected at point which is little bit one side is longer another side is shorter. Fiber 2 one side is uh, very long another side is very short it is almost at the edge. Third one is almost at the center, but right side is little bit longer. Okay. Fourth one it has been picked at the end point, fifth one is almost at the center, sixth one right side is shorter, this one left side is smaller. So, in this way if we see all the fibers they are they will be selected at certain point. Now, after that if these things are folded the ends are folded then if we will see these fibers are arranged in such a fashion the density of the fibers from and from the, the comb clamp side if we go right side the density will follow a straight line curve. So, that these things we will discuss. So, this is uh, density of fi fiber from the length versus the this uh, the proportion of fiber it is the it is called the fibrograph that we will discuss later. So, these are the assumptions we have discussed. Now, the in optoelectronic method this optical method is that a method of measuring the density along the length of the tuft parallel for the parallel fibers. Okay. The sample is prepared by fibro sampler as we have mentioned earlier. This is called tuft and this is the tuft that we have seen earlier. This is the clamped fiber and finally, this is the tuft and in optoelectric method the density of fibers present is measured optically. Okay. So, that we will discuss here. Now, next uh, sample is that it is a random draw method. The random draw method is used to sample loose fiber from the continuous strand of parallel fibers. This strands may be a sliver also we can use this method by in case of roving, but roving main problem is that roving it has got twist. For roving there are other methods, but random draw method principally it is used particularly for sliver. Now, here this is a sliver okay, and it is a black velvet board is there. Okay. So, take out the fibers approximately 2 millimeter in each stage. So, first this is the black velvet board up above that the sliver is placed okay, our test sliver and we are placing some weighted glass. So, that the sliver does not move. Then what we have to do? We have to take out some fiber end from the end. So, this is suppose it is placed on the black velvet pad. The we have to take approximately 2 millimeter of fiber at each stage. So, at each stage we will keep on taking out fiber from say we will grip at say 2 millimeter fiber. So, in that way and the distance until 
a distance equal to the longest fiber in the sliver has removed. So, we have to take out the fibers till the longest fiber is removed in this way and at a stage of 2 millimeter. So, why are we doing these things? Just to avoid any eliminate any chance of being selected by of selection of any broken fiber undue broken fiber. So, uh, from the edge. So, uh, till the longest fiber is removed we are discarding all these fibers. After that next it is assumed that it is a natural length of fiber up from the up we will keep on removing the fiber and keeping it for testing. So, this is called random draw method and after that collect the fibers from each draw. So, every removal it is called one draw okay. and then we will keep the fiber and these fibers will be used for different testing like length, diameter, anything. Okay. Now, let us see the animation here. Now, this, this fibers are being the green color it is showing that these are removed. Okay. First, we are removing this fiber till the natural length has come. Now, after that we are taking the fiber. So, every draw we are doing and removing and keeping for testing and glass this plate that is weight it is a uh, it is a removed actually moved upward gradually. So, now these draws are actually used for the these are the test specimen this is used for testing. Okay. This method is known as the random draw method. Now, the fiber specimen will be free from biasness. Here, there is actually it is a totally length biasness is not there because at when we are removing the fibers from the tip. So, there is even a smaller fiber or longer fiber, short fiber and longer fiber, they will have equal opportunity to get selected. Okay. That is called, this is called numerical sampling. Similar technique is used for another method for roving or yarn, even we can use for sliver also. This technique is known as the cut square technique. So, as the name suggests, it is called because we, are, we have to cut this. So, cut the end of the strand and then all projected fibers are discarded. Okay. So, suppose this is the yarn. So, we have to take the sample from the yarn. Okay. First, we have to cut. We are cutting it. Okay. Then, we have to take the take out the fibers. Now, during cutting or uh, breaking, so it is sure that there are some breakage in fiber. So, this fibers the natural length is not there, some broken lengths are there. Okay. Now, to remove this broken length, first we have to remove these fibers and also it is not like sliver where there is no twist here in yarn and roving twists are present. So, in that case what we have to do? We have to first untwist the roving and yarn, so that fibers come out. So, first what we do? We untwist the roving or yarn. So, we untwist this then the fibers are becoming parallel and after that we take out fibers. In the same way we keep on removing the fiber and discarding. We do not want to keep retain those fibers initially till the natural length is present, because when we are cutting that means we are 
our uh, there are chances that fibers uh, ends are uh, cut. So, after removal of all these fibers then we will try to we will then when whatever fibers we will remove we will keep those fibers. So, the glass plate is then moved back few millimeter exposing more fibers with natural length without cut. Initially there were fibers with cut those has been actually those have been discarded. In each case all projected fiber ends must be removed. So, whatever projected fibers because that this what uh, it is some fibers are projected then all the fibers we have to remove. Then after that the plate glass plate has to be moved little bit backward few millimeter then gradually all the fibers we have to remove. Now, this is the way. So, first this is the roving or yarn and this is glass plate. Glass plate is kept just to keep the fibers intact that roving intact. So, that we can take out the fibers from the end point and then in roving or yarn we have to do one extra operation we have to untwist the end. So, that the fibers become parallel and this then we have to take out the fibers. Okay. Now, let us see the animation here. Now, this is the sample keeping board okay. on this board we have to keep the actual sample. Now, this is the cut end what we are doing we are rotating the cut end that means, we are untwisting the end. So, now it is being rotated Now, the fibers become parallel now and after that we are first operation is that we will remove the fibers with cut length. Okay. So, this fibers will be discarded now it has been discarded okay, the fibers now after that after removal of few uh, fiber few steps now it has become this is the natural length. Then we are taking the draw this is the first sample of natural length of fiber. Then next sample we will do this is the second draw in that way we will keep on doing till the required number of fibers are collected. Okay. This is this system is known as cut square technique. Okay. Now, this is the third draw So, in this way we will keep on taking the sample. Now, we will see the now till now we have what we have seen the sampling of loose fiber, sampling of loose fiber from bale, sampling of loose fiber from sliver, sampling of loose fiber, uh, fiber from yarn or roving. And next is the yarn sampling. So, yarn sampling is typically what we do we use random numbering use the random number and table of random number sampling is used normal uh, as, as small number of yarn bobbins are to be selected from comparatively large bulk of sample. So, random sampling is used here which we have uh, discussed earlier. Suppose, for example, if a total 
of 10 packages are to be selected. Suppose we, are, we want to select 10 packages at random from a consignment. So, from consignment of the few tons, we want to select 10 bobbins, okay, 10 cones. If the consignment consists more than 5 cases, 5 packets, they are selected at random from it and then 2 packages are selected at random from each case. So, 5 case we can select. So, if it suppose there are 1000 case. So, then depending on the, the we, we will select 5 cases from that randomly and from the cases we will again select 2 bobbins, 2 cones per uh, case randomly. Okay. In case there are say less than 5 cases, what we do? We take 10 packages randomly approximately equal from each package like that we have to see. Now, for count of yarn removed from fabric, suppose you want to measure the count of yarn and which is removed from the fabric. So, what we do? This is for measurement of yarn count. Okay. So, we have to cut the rectangular strip from the fabric. So, what we do? Two strips we cut from the warps direction and typically as per standard 5 for web standard web side. Why for warp less? Because warp it is controlled during warping we select we, we, we actually we know which lot is used. For warp we normally use from the same lot but webbed it is coming from different sources or it it may be different uh, lots okay that's why number of samples should be more in case of webbed what is the size normal size is 20 inch length for make, uh, measuring the count of yarn so length is 20 inch and width it varies at least from the width size we should have 50 threads we can from the fabric we can we should be able to take out minimum 50 threads that is the width of the fabric okay. and length should be around 20 inch and different warp or weft in each rectangle that is important. Now, let us see suppose this is a fabric. this is fabric, this is warp, this one is web direction. Okay. Now, what the way we have to select? This is for warp direction length we want to select okay. and there will be say minimum width will be such that at least 50 threads are there in this way we have to cut uh, this is the length it is 20 inch. This is one specimen next specimen we cannot take from this size here because they will have common warp we cannot take. Similarly, we cannot take from this portion because there will be common weft. So, what we have to do we have to take a sample this is say sample specimen 1, second specimen we have to take from this portion, because there is no common warp or there is no common weft. So, that is how we have to select the warp and weft. So, that different warp and weft combination should be there. Okay. Now, to measure twist in yarn, we have to follow little bit different process. Specimens in equal number from 10 packages we have to take. So, this is say one package. So, if we want to test twist say 50 readings we want to take for, uh, because of the statistical sample we have to take. So, if we want to take say 10 uh, from 10 packages, so 50 readings. So, from each package we have to take 5 readings. 
at least 10 package we have to take number of specimen from within one yard of end of the package. So, no no pack no specimen we have to take we can take. So, we have to take out we have to discard at least one meter one yard of length. So, no specimen we have to we can take from within the one yard of length. So, one yard typically we have to discard minimum one year distance between consecutive specimen. So, if we take say after removal if we take a twist measure twist from this portion then we have to remove at least one year then we can take otherwise what will happen twist normally try to get untwisted any material twisted material will always natural tendency is to get untwisted from the end point. So, just to avoid this eliminate this type of possibility we have to take all this precaution while because twist measurement is that it is if the twist is uh, it is getting untwisted then we will get wrong result. Now, for least strength of span yarn 20 complete leaves we have to take okay. one each from 20 packages. So, minimum 20 leaves we have to take and we should take one leaf from each package okay. because why is it it is only one leaf from each package because lee takes care of a longer length it is totally typically it is a 120 yards okay. that is why from one package one lee is enough. If the number of packages are less than 20 then 20 lees are selected at random approximately equal from each package. Suppose we have say 10 packages. So, in that case from each package we can take in that case only we can take 2 lees per package. So, ultimately we have to take say 20 lees. Now, coming to last segment how to sample fabric. So, fabric samples for warp and weft are taken separately. First what you have to do warp direction should be marked. So, we should know that after cutting it is very difficult to identify what is which direction is warp which one is weft. So, before cutting we should mark the direction which is warp and which one is weft. So, similarly like we have discussed no two specimens should contain same warp or same weft okay, weft threads. Samples should not be from within the edge because at the edge we will have some selvage and some other problem may be there. So, we should try to avoid at least 5 centimeter from the sample we should collect the sample. So, 50 millimeter from the sample we have to take selvage. Now, these are the different cuttings. So, this is one sample. Okay. Now, if we tell if I want to take this sample is it correct so, this is this is not correct this is no why because this sample is at the edge of the fabric it is a very close to the selvage. So, this is not acceptable. Okay. Now, these two samples these are not acceptable because we are taking the warp sample. So, these are these uh, two samples they have the same warp. So, this is again not acceptable okay. and what about this two these are correct sampling. So, because they are they contain different sets of warps and different sets of waves. So, this is yes. Also, if we want to take only warp, so this and the say this two are will work, we say this two will work because as far as only warp are concerned. Okay. Similarly, for waved, for waved, if we see this sample, this is the wave direction. So, sample one it is not correct because this is at the edge of the fabric. this is also not correct same weft 
and this is correct because they are they contain different sets of threads. Now, I think that is all about the sampling from text, uh, textile material there are different forms like fiber form, yarn form, sliver, roving and from fabric. So, then after sampling we have to actually perform the testing. Okay? Thank you.